All right, and I'd like to introduce Lynn Wintergross of the Jewish Vocational Services. Uh, Lynn, you'll need to unmute yourself. Is this the last talk show? Um, sorry, Michael, it's not time to talk right now. Oh, I'm oh. gonna meet you. Okay. okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good morning, everybody. I wish I could see you all in person instead of little faces and little squares. Um, my name is Lynn Winter Gross, and I'm looking forward to talking with you today and um, presenting some of my ideas on getting to the job interview and then, get, and then acing the job interview once you get there. My background is as a career counselor. I'm working currently at Jewish Vocational Service um, working one-on-one -on -one with clients who have been out of work for more than six months, um, many much longer than that. And uh, we work on how to find a job, how to um, write your resume, and how to ace the interview. So talking about resumes and talking about um, the interview. And the point that I will keep stressing today over and over again is for the job interview and for your resume, know what the job is. Um, target your answers and your, your resume and your answers in the offer, I mean, in the, in the interview to what the job is. So keeping in mind that we're gonna talk about that today. Um, in terms of my background, I've done a lot of media training and um, worked with the Chambers of Commerce on people who've been out of work for a while and um, are looking to get back in again. It's, it's tough, I'm, I'm aware how hard it is once you've been out of work to get back into the job uh, scene and how lonely it can be in terms of um, looking for a job. So um, I, I work on that a lot with people that I'm working with. Next slide, please. So topics that we will be covering today is how to prepare for your interview and know what the interviewer is looking for. So again, um, that's the job description. Look at the job description, write down what the interviewer is looking for and then make your answers relevant. So we're gonna be talking about that today. How to deal with the difficult questions. Those of you who have had interviews already um, are familiar with many of the questions and we'll go over those. And how to address your work history gaps. Um, many of you have been unemployed, I'm sure because of COVID and in other ways have had um, job have had gaps in your resume over the years for one reason or another. We're gonna talk about that and about issues of ageism. Uh, it used to be if you were over 70, it was hard to get a job. Now, sometimes it's if you're over 40. So we're gonna be talking about that and then how to follow up. Next slide, please. Where should I look for a job? Where should you look for a job? From what you've already had this morning with Leah, you've, she's got so many ways for you to use the San Francisco Public Library at their jobs and career centers. Just listening to her presentation this morning, there's just so many ways you can use um, the library in terms of um, finding where the jobs are opening. Indeed.com, LinkedIn.com, Glassdoor, Career Builder, and JVS.org, that's Jewish Vocational Service where I work, has uh, multiple workshops. So I hope that you're using these in terms of where the jobs are. I get emails every single day from all of these groups of we're opening here and we're opening there and here's a job and we're looking for somebody with these skills. So if you get on these sites, they will um, keep bombarding you with information and show you where the jobs are. So these are some great organizations to um, stay in touch with. Next slide, please. Research the company. Let's say that you're um, looking for a specific job at a specific company. And before you're gonna send your resume, um, find out about them. Don't just look on your website, uh, do some research. What do they do? What are their challenges? What's happened with, with their staff during COVID? And what job skills are in the job description? Do you have them? So this is after you've looked at a number of organizations and you want to target your resumes to specific jobs. I've been working with people that say, oh, I sent out a hundred resumes and I haven't heard anything. That's not targeted. If you target your resumes and you target your job search, then you have a more specific idea of what you're looking for. Just to send out a random 
um, generic resume all over the place. It's discouraging because it doesn't help much. Networking, we're gonna talk about networking with people at the company where you're looking and how to uh, have an informational interview to get more information about the job. And then also hopefully you're all on LinkedIn and how do you keep your profile up to date? Um, make it dynamic, make it um, again, relevant to the kind of job skills that people are looking for. Next slide, please. Networking, I'm hoping that all of you are networking. 70% um, of jobs are not listed and they're filled by personal recommendations. I found that astounding when I first saw that number. I thought, no, you just apply for a job, you look online and find the job. This is showing that people recommend people. I assume all of you have been in the position or many of you have been in the position of somebody saying, you know, what's your company like? I hear there's a job, can you help me? Um, so if you get a chance to find people in many cases through LinkedIn, who are at companies that um, you're looking at. And then um, you can find somebody who will then say to somebody else at the job, I've got a person for you that I think is really right for the job. So then your, job, your resume is not just sitting on top of a pile somewhere. Um, you've got an inside track. So, and you can find out more about the culture at the job. What's it like? Is it a small company? Is it big? Is it mostly people working in teams? Is it people working alone? Um, you find out the specifics of the job, but also what's it, what's it like for people working there and talking to people about why did you choose to work here and what's it like here? Um, are there a lot of group meetings? Are there not? Uh, how's the, how's the um, how does management make decisions? So the more you know, the better off you are when you get that interview. Next slide, please. Preparation for online interviews is key. Um, first of all, I've talked to a number of people who, when I look, when we do Zoom and I look at their background and I'm more focused on their background than I am on them. And there's distractions. There's, last time I was talking to somebody, there's a beautiful painting of, of very complicated. And I was looking at that and figuring out what was going on in the painting. And I went, wait a minute. I said to them, maybe you need to move your screen a little bit. So I'm not just looking at the painting. Dress appropriately. We've all heard frequently about um, Zoom dressing, Zoom interviews, like you just need from the top up. Um, dress professionally, dress because it affects how you present yourself. So dress as if you were having an in-person interview. Test and practice with the technology. Um, I've had many interviews with people who all of a sudden their, their screen goes blank and um, they don't know what to do about it. So um, test it, figure out what the problems are and do the best that you can do with it. Then you have the interviewer's contact information in case you have any problems. I had a meeting with somebody yesterday and they just could not get their Zoom to work. So they had my phone information, they called me, we talked and um, finally was able to get back on. But in the meantime, I wasn't thinking, wow, this person just never showed up. Um, and I've done it many times when my Zoom isn't working and have called the person and say, I'm here, but I'm having trouble. And many times we just say, okay, let's just do a phone interview. When you have, um, when you get ready for your interview, focus on your skills and have your skills, a list of your job skills and your resume handy. So what I've done and what I've suggested to people is on the sides of your computer, make notes of what your skills are so that you remember them. Because once you start talking, you get nervous and you forget and uh, you don't know which skills to talk about. So um, it's important that you keep in mind what your skills are. And again, these are skills for um, that specific job that you're looking for. Uh, next, please. Here are the common interview questions that I assume those of you who are looking for a job have had. Tell me about yourself. Okay, so what, where do you start? What are you supposed to talk about? Where you grew up, where you went to college, what you've been doing, wh where you start. So the answer that you should be giving is determined by what the job is. Are they interested in your background because it's for an international job? And then you talk about what you've done. If it's a 
a desk job dealing, dealing with data. You talk about that. Um, talk about what, what they would be interested in in terms of who they are um, interviewing. So pretend you are the interviewer and you're interviewing yourself for the job. What do you want to know? And what is it that you want to know that's going to help you sell yourself for the job? So people will ask, what have you been doing since your last job? Many of you have been out of work, I assume, since COVID, and it's been a year. And what have you been doing? So we're going to talk about that. Um, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Again, I, the question of what is your weakness is just such a hard question, because you're not going to say my weaknesses. I'm late to work. I don't get along well. Um, obviously, you don't want to promote your weakness, but a weakness can be yeah, I find that sometimes when I'm talking to teams, I've asked them to do something, but I really haven't prepared them for that. So now I understand that I need to prepare people in a better way. And I've been doing that and that's really been working well. So you pick a weakness that you had and you turn it into a strength, your awareness of it. Give me an example of a problem you've had at your last job and what did you do to solve it? Again, if you can find a problem that's relevant to the job, if you can't, you do your best, but try to find something like, yeah, we were running slow and things weren't getting done. And um, I saw the issue it was if I train more people or we tried a different way of getting around it, then, then um, it worked better. So what we were able to do was we were able to save money. We were able to sell to more people. We were able to get the management involved. Um, whatever you've done with a specific example, again, I keep saying it over and over again, relevant to what the job is. Um, show that the skills you've had. Yeah, I've dealt with these problems and I've figured out ways to solve them. And here's the results. We've saved money. We've been able to hire more people. We've been able to do more social media. What, what did you do? What, what did you do that helped move the company forward and help solve problems? Questions about if you worked with a multicultural staff. Have there been issues with that? Have there been problems with that? How, is it, how has it worked? What, how, what have you done um, in case there's issues among the staff? Um, have you done anything to help? And the last, why are you the best candidate for the job? I often ask people when they're interviewed, why should I hire you? I've got four people that I'm interviewing before you and people after you, why you? So again, this is selling yourself for the job. And I would, I would um, emphasize again, um, having a list of your job skills and remind yourself um, why you're the best person for the job so um, that you can sell yourself. And it's hard sometimes as we're talking or get distracted, I'm not distracted by a dog outside barking, um, it's, it's that you can, you can sell yourself and you've got it right available next to you to remind yourself of your skills. Next job, please. It's hard to sell ourselves sometimes because we've been taught, don't brag, don't brag about yourself. Okay, so how do you sell yourself without feeling like you're bragging? So again, what is the interviewer looking for? What are some of the soft skills that they're looking for and the hard skills? And the soft skills, I assume you're familiar with those words. The soft skills are how you communicate, how you, what your critical thinking is, what about leadership? Um, what have you done with management? What have you done with motivating people on your team? A positive attitude, how have you shown, and you will show this in the interview, what, um, how have you shown enthusiasm and dependability and respectability? And teamwork, what have you done in terms of working with the team? These are all soft skills. Your work ethic, are you reliable? Are you results oriented? What's your time management? What are your time management skills? These are the soft skills. And show how you've used these skills. Have you um, used them in a situation where something happened and the fact that you have good critical thinking skills and good communication skills, you've been able to solve, solve specific problems. And then the hard skills, I assume most of you are familiar with, those are your computer skills, administrative skills, customer service skills, sales, healthcare, legal, those are the, the hard skills that, um, that you wanna sell. And then what about your transferable skills? 
give um, specific examples when you're talking about your soft skills and your hard skills, what you've done and show your accomplishments in terms, or an example is there was a problem at my company and because I'm able to, I have leadership capabilities, I was able to bring in some people and we were able to solve a problem. So um, again, show what you've done, what specific examples you've done in order to um, move the company forward. Next slide, please. What about gaps in your resume? Um, be honest. Lots of people's resumes I look at and say, oh, I see that you did something in 2019 or 2018 and then there's nothing till 2020. What did you do? So lots of us or lots of people might try to fudge it, but be honest. Did you have to take time off to care for a family member? Um, many people that I've worked with, they got sick, their parents got sick, their child got sick, they had a new baby. So there it is. You took time off to do that. Many people, of course, um, talk about how they've got laid off during COVID. Some have traveled, some have volunteer work, um, some have taken new courses to pivot and refocus their careers. When you talk about what you've done during these times off, if you can, find some relevant experience and skills relating to the job. So I worked with somebody um, a couple of weeks ago who traveled. Um, this was pre-COVID, but he traveled and we talked about, well, is there anything you can do um, that you did while you traveled to have um, in, improve your skills or increase your skills um, that are relevant, that, that, that the employer would find was relevant. So yeah, we found things or people who have um, taken care of a family member, they needed management skills in terms of working with hospitals or working with doctors or figuring out food, um, food delivery. So um, what are the relevant skills that, you, that are re uh, relevant related to the job that you can talk about? And people take time off. I mean, all of us don't have perfect resumes that every single year we can add uh, another skill. So be honest and, and own it. Next slide, please. What about ageism? Ageism is a problem. And as I said, it used to be when you're over 40, they thought, I mean, when you're over 70, they thought you were too old, but now um, you can be over 40 and they'll think you're too old. And why is that? Because they think your skills are outdated or your salary requirements are too high. And why should I hire you at salary that could be double what a younger employee um, will take? Or maybe you're overqualified. You were already the manager of the department. Why do you wanna be in a department? Maybe you'll get bored. You've already done that job um, or that you're gonna retire soon and leave. And um, they come in with, with these um, biases and your job is gonna to be to, um, to um, show that you're not too old for the job. So um, next slide, please. I think I, I, let's see. Did we miss one about older workers or good hires? Oops, I guess it didn't, I'll, I'll just talk about it. Um, <clears throat> research shows that older workers are good hires because they bring experience to the job. They've been through most of the problems that you're gonna find on the job. Um, they'll often negotiate pay because they'll say, you know, I don't want to run the department anymore. Um, I'd like to be part of a department and let somebody else worry about the bigger responsibilities. Or I'll take online courses and I will, um, I will improve my skills. I will pivot, I will learn new skills. All of us need to be taking, um, updating our skills all the time. So um, it's important that um, you can tell them, yes, I'm, I'm willing to take the, take the courses and learn. On the other hand, if it's a company that's not so interested in older workers, maybe you don't wanna work there. So I'm getting job descriptions all the time, again, from companies that, because that, um, I've asked to be sent jobs for people that are over 70 or over 60. And I get, you know, we're hiring, we look for somebody we're looking for somebody that's a little older, that's had experience. So um, there are companies that um, are interested in hiring people that are, that are over 30 or over 40, and they'll understand that, that um, you'll take courses or you'll be flexible. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Next slide, please. These are um, resources to check out again um, for jobs. Um, while you're looking at them, this is the public library, Indeed, LinkedIn. I just wanted to remind you again, places that you can look for jobs and you can look if you're a senior, which ones are looking for seniors. Um, if you're uh, just coming back to work, um, I was looking at a job yesterday. It says, this is good for people who've been out of the workforce for a while, or this is good for older people, or we're looking for people who've been in the military, or we're looking for people that had to drop out of college. So there's a lot of, <clears throat> you can massage these websites and stay on them, stay, stay on them and, and um, keep checking them out in terms of what's available. Next slide, please. This was the one that got, got turned around. You know, we talked about this, um, the, the advantages that older workers can take, that have. Next slide, please. It's never too late to learn new skills for older workers and younger workers. Um, many people that I'm working with the Jewish Vocational Service have decided to pivot. They've gone from nonprofit to corporate. They've gone from volunteering to in, in a, in a small organization to working in a corporate organization. I worked with one woman the other day who um, is learning new skills because she wants to work for a company and she just doesn't, doesn't have those skills. So next slide, please. Oh, this is, this is a little bit backed up. Okay, um, where you can upskill. I, I don't know, the slides somehow got turned around a little bit, but. I don't know if that's, if you can see the where you can upskill, but um, local community colleges, LinkedIn, back up one more. Okay, it didn't, there we go. Nope, that's not it. Okay, never mind. I'll, I'll just talk about it. Local community colleges have a lot of courses for, it's okay, just keep it there a minute, please. Um, a lot of college, a lot of community colleges have online courses. LinkedIn has courses, Jewish Vocational Service. We have courses on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Salesforce, healthcare, uh, data analysis, uh, more nursing courses. So there's, um, JVS is another good site. General, the General Assembly, Microsoft, Coursera, Udemy, Udemy, excuse me. and. There's lots of places if you want to upskill, and we all need to keep doing this over and over again to keep keep relevant. I mean, sometimes we can learn on the job, but sometimes it's um, yeah. LinkedIn, Linda, Linda, I see somebody just put that in. Um, Linda.com for LinkedIn learning. So follow up and and stay stay on top of skills. I mean, stay on top of um, what you need to know for these for these jobs. Next, please. During the interview, um, feel free to ask questions. At the end, we're gonna ask, we're gonna focus on what some of the questions you can ask, but this is a two-way process looking for a job. They're interviewing you and you're also interviewing them. Is this a place that I wanna work? I mean, most of us think that we have an interview. We just wanna get the job and get going, but is it a place that you wanna work? Sometimes it's the last resort. Sometimes it's a job that we want just to carry us over so that we can make some money till we get the real job that we want, but you're interviewing them too. <clears throat> when they're done with the formal interview, you can ask them, do they have any questions for you that you haven't addressed? Have I done anything you wanna know about? Are there other issues we haven't discussed? And then what are the next steps in the process? If I get the job, what challenges might be in the next 30 days? And how will they determine success on the job? How are you gonna measure success on this job? Um, what else is it that I need to know? What are the teams like? Anything that you can ask the interviewer, but have them ready in advance. Don't just hope that you're going to get something as, as the time goes on. Again, have them ready so that you're able to um, just be prepared uh, and, to, and to talk to them about what else are they, are they looking for that maybe you haven't talked about. Next slide, please. Thank you notes. When I talk to people, I ask them, please write me a thank you note, just because you need to practice. Well, I must say I hardly get any. 
Um, but the important, one, the important thing is to send a note. And the number of employers that I've talked to say that when they get a thank you note, it really shows them that people are on the ball, they care. Um, remind them of your relevant skills. You can say in the thank you note, as we've talked about, I'm very interested in your job, in the job, in the company, because my skills are relevant to what you're looking for. And you may want to remind them of a couple of those. Show your interest. I'm very interested in the job. I'm interested in what you do. I'm interested in your company. And when I talk to people individually, I say, why do you want to work for this company? Well, I like working with data. OK, but why do you want to work for this company? So find out. Um, what it is about the job and then sell it again when you're thanking them that I'm interested in the job because you do work that I've always been interested in and that I think is important. And share any ideas you might have. You can say, you know, after I met with you, I've really been thinking that I, um, some ideas that you might be interested in and share those. So show that you're, you're there with it, you're on top of it and, um, and you appreciate the time and you're willing to talk if they need any more information from you. Next slide, please. Don't forget, network, network, network. Jewish Vocational Service, I think we're called the network service. Keep, keep networking with people to find those jobs on the hidden market. Have informational interviews. Use your resources as much as you can, wherever you can. Whether you wanna join a professional organization that has meetings, whether you just, you know, you the people who are on this call today, um, anybody that you wanna to talk to that's, that's here, or any contacts you have, keep talking to them, letting them know what you're looking for, letting them know about your skills. Research the company before you apply. Don't forget to look at the company. What are they doing? Um, what are, how are your specific skills relevant? And practice your answer. Practice, practice, practice. There's not too many ways they can get you off guard if you've practiced your answers. And practice with a friend, um, it's very hard just to do this alone all day long and looking at your computer and then you forget what your skills are. So practice with them. Next slide, please. Good luck, keep it going, keep, keep it going. One of the things that we talk about a lot at the Jewish Vocational Service is get some buddies that you can work with once a week. Um, find out, um, you know, what are they doing? How can you help them and how can they help you? So um, at the Jewish Vocational Service, they're called accountability buddies. And they meet once or twice a week and share their list of what they're gonna do. And then, well, did you do it? No, why didn't you do it? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. We'll do it. Um, and you encourage them and they encourage you. So it's very hard to do this alone, this job search. And the fact that you all came on today is excellent. You need the stimulation from others. So um, any questions? Um, not so far, Lynn. Um, what? Okay. Uh, not so far. Um, actually, one just came in. Uh, JVS on the application, you said, like, said you have to be a San Francisco resident. I live in on the cusp of Daly City in San Francisco. Is there any way JVS makes an exception? It's such a shame to keep getting these amazing opportunities in the email only to find I cannot apply over a technicality? I'll have to find out. Um, let me get that the information. I've never, I mean, the people that I see in the workshops are from all over the place. So I'll be glad to, to find out. I, I hadn't heard of that before, but I can find out if we get an email address and get back to you on that. Can we get that? Lynn, Lynn I have another one for you. Uh, someone's asking, is it more advantageous to pay for LinkedIn instead of using the free version? From our LinkedIn people that I work with at Jewish Vocational Service, they feel like, and I'm gonna answer from their point of view, that no, that the, the general services are just fine. You don't need to go on, on the um, expensive one, on the one you have to pay for. Okay, um, Lynn, I just wanna let you know that we don't want people to post their personal information in the chat because then everyone Good. gets it. I of course. Have your, I have your email. And if you are calling in, you can email us at bizsidetech at sfpl.org. Okay. Ask for, ask for information, but um, just for your own personal protection, it's best sure. not to put your personal information in the chat. 
Sure, I understand. So how are we following up with this question? So I have the question and I have the email. Okay, okay, yeah. So that's the question of whether you have to be a San Francisco resident to come to JVS programs. I don't think so, but I, I would like to be sure I have that information correct. Lynn, here's another one, uh, thanking you. And do you have any tips for new graduates who are entering the workforce with little or no work experience? I think they're the, they're the same. You know, what is it that you wanna do? What are your skills? Um, what, what areas are you most interested in? Get on LinkedIn, um, talk to people about what companies, what, what are your back, what's your background and use your resources, informational interviews. Oh, you're uh, this, do you, how do you like it? How did you decide to do that? Oh, I'm interested in social ac action. How do I get into that? Oh, I'm interested. So talking to people that you know um, that are in different jobs and finding out what is it they like to do or what are your strengths and, and talking to um, maybe the career counselor at the library um, in terms of showing them what is it that you've done in college and in your background that you're interested in and what your skills are and let's talk about what kinds of opportunities I should be looking for. Is that an answer? Yeah, and I, I think uh, someone else is asking is, are JVS services available for people who aren't a part of JVS who aren't members? Yes. And it's called Jewish Vocational Service, but it's open to everybody. Another question, uh, I'm over 50. What is the likelihood of my getting a city job with San Francisco? A city job? I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that. I, I, but I get job openings all the time for people over 50 but I haven't checked um, with the city. And I can address that a little bit. There is, if you check our calendar on the library's Good. website, we are offering a program that deals with that. Um, another question, what about an interviewer that's not a good interviewer? Say that again, what about well, an interviewer that's not a good interviewer? How, yes. do you, yeah. how do you work with somebody? Then you have to kind of take charge and be sure that you tell them what it is that you want them to know about you. Lots of these people are not good interviewers and or you're on the clock and okay your time is up so just be sure that you get across what your skills are and that you're aware of what the job is and that you have the skills for the job okay and another one what if your work gap is due to a long illness how do you address that one just be honest i've i've been ill and i had to take care of myself and i wasn't able to work while I was doing that, and I'm ready now, if, if you're ready now, um, I, I just wasn't able to work, but I'm back in and I've, um, you know, I'm interested in this job and I have the skills for the job. Another one, how to best answer the question, why do you wanna work here? Because you've researched the organization and you know what they do and they're aligned with your, with your values. Um, I'm interested in working at, the library because um I, because what the services that they offer and i've always been a member and have always thought that it's you know they're they're up to date in what they're doing and what they provide and um and just whatever you knowing about the company knowing about what they do and then say well this is why i want to work here i mean i've asked people you know well i like as i said before oh i like data analysis well, are you, do you want to sell potato chips or do you want to work in a social activism environment? What do you want to do? You know, so find what is the company doing that aligns with your interest? Another one, how do you recommend finding accountability buddies or others looking for work if you don't know anyone like that? Are there any organizations that bring these people together? First of all, is there any way people who are on this call connect with each other? They can do so through the chat, but as Leah said, we, we recommend not people putting their information on here. Okay, so how, how would they do so during through the chat? Otherwise through LinkedIn. I think I'd, I'd like to find an account, a, a buddy to work with on LinkedIn. I'm looking for certain jobs in certain areas and I'd like to find somebody on LinkedIn that I can work with. Or people that don't in an organization that, that you like, or just a, a friend who's also looking for a job, but it should hopefully be somebody who's dealing with the same stresses that you are who's looking for a job because you can be helpful to them as well. But I'm not sure if the library can maybe at some point, you know, open up something that, you know, people who are 
because there are so many people on this call who could help each other. So I'm not quite sure the best way to do that. Another one, I have had several government job interviews. These tend to be very formulaic with no follow-up or flexibility. Can you discuss these types of interviews? So that means that you have the interview and then nothing happens and you, you've tried to follow up, but you don't get any response. I mean, what, what after a couple of times of trying to get back to them and well, what's going on and are you interested, you know, after two or three tries, a couple of weeks apart, maybe you have to move on to the next job. Uh, you spoke about certain companies who desire older workers. How do we locate these types of companies? As I mentioned on Indeed and Glassdoor and LinkedIn, um, I've just put in older workers um, and I'm getting a lot of um, feedback from, I get Indeed every day of we're hiring older workers. So I think looking at these job sites and putting an older worker in, um, putting in that you're an older worker and seeing what you can get. Also with informational interviews, if you talk to people at different companies and say, you know, I'm looking for a job and um, I have these skills. So it's, it's, inter, it's um, job sites. And I don't know if the library deals with that at all in terms of your career center. Yeah, and I, I think uh, we've posted links to the career counseling. Uh, someone also asks, if uh, not having a LinkedIn account, is that job search suicide? No, but it helps to have one. And a follow-up- Because people, the uh, people are talking to each other all the time on LinkedIn and, and um, getting back to each other and following each other. A so it's a good idea to have one. And I think, I think I just saw that you have a program about LinkedIn coming up. Yes. Uh, a follow-up to the uh, formulaic interviews. The interview itself has set questions. They do not follow up and there's no clarification in the interview questions. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. What, there's no going, follow up, what, I don't understand. Yeah, that was going back to the formulaic interview for uh, a government job that someone had asked earlier. And there is, I guess there's no form for them to follow up. Is there anything they can do? If you can't follow up, there's no contact or anything? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't know how to get around that unless you have a, somebody in the organization that can follow up for you. And someone's asking how to search for not, non, non-profit job entities. I'm getting lots of connections for, for profit making entities during the last six months. None of them are for non-profit jobs. They're getting, they're getting, where are they getting this information for the other jobs? Yeah, we'll see if they answer that in the, in the okay. chat. And I think, I think, um, to put in any of these websites that I suggested for where to find a job um, to put in nonprofit, but I would assume that that person's already trying to do that. Actually, Rama, if you want to unmute yourself and explain what you are asking a little bit more, then maybe we can help you with your answer. Hi, uh, of course. Uh, uh, thanks for Lynn uh, for your nice presentation. So my question is, so I'm looking for the job, uh, but due to my uh, status, so I'm not getting the job. I landed many interviews and I'm very good at my uh, relevant uh, skills and my uh, based on my last eight years professional experience, only due to my visa status. So I'm not getting any sponsorship from the profit making entities due to there are uh, many restrictions. So far, I understand uh, for not-for-profit making entities, uh, there is no problem for sponsoring. So uh, through LinkedIn, uh, I have been connecting many uh, agent, many employer, many internal uh, recruiter, but only problem with my visa status. So uh, last six months, I didn't get any not-for-profit uh, job offer or connection. So my question is, how do I uh, looking for the not-for-profit uh, jobs? I'm sorry, I'm not, you mean, how do you look for any non, how do you just look for nonprofit jobs? We're not talking about your visa? Yes. And have you looked under, under these websites for nonprofit organizations? 
No, I didn't. I just uh, connecting lots of uh, recruiter through LinkedIn. My base, because uh, I uh, subscribe for premium LinkedIn service, uh -huh. $20 per month. So maybe that's why I'm getting uh, lots of job offer. Uh, I didn't search any other sources. I, I would, Leah, do you have any answer to that? But I would suggest that, that you put into these sources nonprofit um, organizations that are, I mean, nonprofit jobs. Um, I'd have to do the research. Um, I know that we work with an organization that works with people who are over 50 and ha or have a disability that work with not that place you in nonprofit jobs, but they're it, it, they're uh, sort of um, the wage is is not it's just a supplemental wage. It's not a a wage that would help you live in San Francisco. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, I I don't have any problem uh, about the wages. So I I just I need the job. Okay, and if you are over 50, then I can... Um... No, I'm not over 50. I'm just over 30. <laughs> All right, so I, I, would, um, I would need to do some research about that, Ramat, and I can get back to you. Okay, sounds good. Do you have my email? Yeah, if you signed up with your email, then I have your email. Sounds great. Thank you so much. And I would add, are there, is there a specific area of interest of yours that you would like to follow through with? To Sorry, look for no. nonprofits in that area. Sorry, I don't understand. Can you please explain it? Well, is just as is there a particular type of job that you're looking for within nonprofits? Uh, I can tell you my experience. So over the last eight years, so I did um, external financial statements audit. I have uh, accounting and finance experiences. So, but okay. I mean. For not-for-profit entities, I, I know maybe there are no uh, direct uh, requirement for the accounting and audit experience, but uh, I also audited some not-for-profit entities like Save the Children, uh, Asian Development, I mean, the, some other not-for-profit entities audit as well. What I was suggesting, and Leah, you want, I'm sure you have an answer, but what I was suggesting is Research the agencies that you're interested in and the causes that you're interested in, in terms of what which nonprofits, there's so many nonprofits doing so many different things. Um, do you want to, I mean, you, do you want to work with children? Do you want to work with Asians? Do you want to work with, I mean, there's so many different areas. Maybe you need to search those and start looking for those and seeing if how you get into those organizations. Okay. Otherwise the word not, I mean, nonprofit, there's just so many and, and they just deal with so many different topics follow your interest to start with. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, there was a hand up earlier, but it looks like it's gone. And then JP, you wanna read Annalisa's question? Yeah, so she's, I think she's following up to something to you, Lynn. She's asking, what were you going to say about being over 50? What was I going to say? Well, I think that you know certain organizations are hiring people over 50. They want the experience. And you find that out through these job sites. Or as I said, I've, I've put in just in Google jobs available for people over 50. And I get Indeed and LinkedIn. And they're just sending me stuff all the time. So um, and doing informational interviews. Where would you like to work? Um, following an interest and then seeing if there's anybody you know at that company or know somebody who knows somebody at the company to sell your skills. And then yeah, what I had said, said before was, if it's a company that really doesn't want older people, it's a, then that's probably not where you want to work. Gotcha. And I think this is pertaining to both you and the JVS, but do you work with people to help them identify what they wish to do if they don't know? Any I'm, not, you, you, I'm not as much as a uh, counselor in terms of what, but JVS has a lot of, has people who do that. Okay. Who help people figure out here are my skills, here are my background. I really don't know exactly what I want to do. Can you go through with me all the options using my skills? Mostly I'm, I'm spending time with people. Okay. You know, you, you know what kind of, you're applying for a job. Here's the job description. Where on your resume does it show those skills? 
And here's the interview again, here's the job description where, how are you selling yourself during the interview with the skills that they're looking for? Also, um, uh, the library offers a database it's called Job Now through Brain Fuse, where you can get live expert help on career coaching. And that's um, in one of my slides that I'll send you after the presentation. Great. And someone just asked, what if my skills are not exactly the skills and the job requirements? How are the chances to get in the job even, not, even if it's not a total match? I would say that use any skills that are relevant or I'm taking a course on, or I will learn to do, or I'm gonna find resources to help with that because you don't always have all the, the skills that they're asking for. So I would say, well, I'm interested, I'm realizing that I need that and I'm gonna take a course on that, or I'm taking a course on that, or I intend to find people that can help me with that. That's all I'm seeing for now. Leah or JP, would you have a different answer to that? Um, I was trying to work on a, some something else. Course. Yeah, I was multitasking. Okay. So, um, what was the question? Well, well, basically, how do you how do you answer for if you don't have the skills that they're looking for, don't have all the skills that they're looking for? And my recommendation is that you take, you say, I'm going to take a class or I'm, I'm in a class, I'm learning, it's very important, or I'm going to, you know, find ways to figure that out. But I have all these other skills that are, that are relevant and um, I can learn, learn um, what it is I need to know to fit your needs. Yeah, I think that's good. And I think often with skills, there's a lot of crossover that one yes. skill can help with another. So you definitely emphasize that. Yes, and it's hard to have all the skills that they're looking for at the job. I mean, unless it's just all you need is a BA and we're willing to talk to you. But, you know, it, as many of the skills that are listed that you have, you should stress. And if you don't have them, you don't have them. But as you said, JP, a lot of skills are transferable. And, and similar. Hi, um, I have a, a question. It's uh, related to this one. Um, so um, my current job doesn't have management, uh, um, like manage the people management um, role, but I did mm -hmm. have in the previous one. Mm -hmm. um, how do you respond in an interview? You know, they are looking for somebody with previous management or current management, but um, they don't seem to be open to like, you know, the fact that you don't currently have it, but you had it before. Oh, okay. And you've, you've told people that you've done it before and that doesn't work? Correct. I did. Oh. And um, even though it's not very, like, it was not necessary, it was a nice to have. It was really um, not, uh, how do you say, it was not good enough. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully... I mean, whatever. So there's parts of the management job that you haven't that you haven't had, but I would say that you'd say that you can do that. You you can do that, but you know that's that hasn't you, that skill wasn't necessary in that job, but you have the skills for it. You've done management and promoted as much as you as you can. Okay. But that's hard. I understand that's hard if they want one specific thing and you you don't have that, but. It sounds like you can learn it and you've done similar things and you're interested in the job and bringing your other skills there. Thank you. Lynn, another question. How do you answer a question on uh, if a company has ever had to let you go? And that you haven't been- Yeah, so how do you answer, I guess, how do you answer a question uh, related to if a company has ever had to let you go, that's that's Michael or Michelle Cody's asking that. Well, I guess if you've had if they've let if they've had to let you go, why they let, had to let you go, or you know wasn't working, or they changed they changed what they wanted to do, changed direction. Um, I had some different ideas, or staffing needs changed, um, or I mean the question I guess is were you fired and why. I mean, is that kind of the direct question? But I would say that, you know, the company, 
just needed different skills that, that I had than, uh, than what I had. Or they changed, they changed the team around or um, their priorities changed. I have another question. Um, so I was asked why, why was I interested in leaving a big corporation job for a small startup job? So how do you best answer that question? What was the, what was the reason? I really love their technology um, on what they are working on. And, you know, I have over 10 years of experience in the field and I was really interested in, you know, moving towards leadership. So you don't think that was a good enough answer or an appropriate answer or what happened? Why wasn't that answer good enough? Mm, I mean, I don't know if it answered per se, why do I want to leave a big company and go for a startup? It's like, you know, you seem to have a stable job. Why would you leave for a because small? I'm, because I'm interested in what this company is doing and it's interested in a startup and bringing it up to where, you know, helping them grow. I understand how companies grow and I've worked with one that's big and grown and I'm, I like the challenges of starting with a small company and helping them grow. I think my skills are very appropriate to helping a company grow and start up. Okay. And I like what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Makes it sound easy, I know. Um, here's another one, Lynn. Um, it's not easy, I'm, I'm aware. Another one for you, Lynn. How much follow-up is appropriate without seeming desperate or pushy? Yeah, well, we recommend a couple of weeks. I mean, the Bright and Wire thank you note, and then maybe a week later, and then maybe another week later after that. And then after two or three tries, you don't get back. It's just, you know, move on. I mean, if you can find out what happened or what, did they hire somebody already? Or can they tell you what happened in the interview? Um, sometimes they just don't get back or they'll get back. I mean, we've heard cases where people get back after five months and say, oh, we're just now hiring. Are you still interested? I mean, sometimes there is not a specific reason or it's been an inside. They promoted a person from the inside. Um, but um, after a while, you just have to say, there's nothing else I can do. I've tried. But it's frustrating. It's like, okay, I just did this interview. Tell me what happened. Why didn't I get it? Do you have any recommendations? Anything I could have done differently? Um, and sometimes they just don't get back to you. And that's frustrating and it's not very nice. Perhaps we have time for uh, one or two more. Uh, Juliet asks, how long does it typically take for a job to get back to you after sending a resume uh, to get back to you for an interview? And for the example would be a big hospital. I don't know if there's a typical one. If, if JP or Leah, do you think? I think some some are right away, and some just take a while. Some and it, you know, it's. I guess the question is, you know, what do you do while you're waiting? Do you just keep asking for their advice, or do you just move on? I mean, sometimes you hear right away, and sometimes they say, you know, we're still interviewing candidates, we're moving around stuff and management. And I don't think there's a typical time, but it, I know it's frustrating to be on the other end waiting. And you just have to keep the job search going. I mean, just keep, be, I mean, I, I worked with a guy yesterday. It's like, well, I'm waiting and waiting. I said, you just can't keep waiting. You got to keep going on and, and trying to find other ones. And it's hard if you've had the interview and you thought it went well. And it's like, okay, what's the deal? Why aren't you getting back to me? You know, uh, I think you've just got to keep looking for other ones at the same time. And it's a pain. I mean, it's really a pain in the neck. Be nice if they got back and said what's happening, but they don't always. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions. Do you, JP? No, I don't see any more, but uh, to address your point, Lynn, people ha are helping each other out in the chat right now. There's some advice passed along to each other. So- Oh, good. That's a good example of the networking we've been here and, and Great. each other out. That's the best. That's the best result that could happen from today, from my point of view. 
So in talking about networking, so how do we go about connecting with somebody who is um, um, attending this uh, event right now? We are not able to direct message to people. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Question. I've never really had that question before. Um, yeah, we can't give out patron information, um, but I mean, you can create a meetup group and meet people that way. You can meet people through LinkedIn. Um, those are two of the primary ways that people meet people who are having similar experiences. I thought JP just said that people are meeting each other in the chat room, but I understand that they can't give out email addresses. So that they're exchanging um, advice in the chat okay. It's okay. at all of our programs. Right. But in terms of direct contact, um, we can't share that. In, we're, legally I understand. Bound, we're legally bound not to share patron Again. information. <laughs> right. Um, so I guess Lisa, L, and Andrea, if you want to connect, why don't you both email us at BizSciTech and um, we can share your information that way. I'm that sorry, I do not understand. Uh, you've both expressed that you and Andrea would like to connect. Um, I don't know, JP, do you think I'm getting into some <laughs> hot water here? You know, we can try. It's it's a thing that's happened in the past. And you are able to direct message to each other during these chats. But as Leah said, because of library policy, we can't have you guys putting your email addresses up here. But yeah, we, we can try. I'm going to post our email address. And if you have, uh, if you want to make a connection with somebody else in this in this program, send us an email and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, and also, you know, JP's right. If you just click on the name of the person that you want to directly connect with and send your email to them, it will only go to that person. So that's another way that you could do it. Um, that's great. That's great that you're making that available. I think the more contacts people have, the more helpful it is. The first, I mean, in terms of looking for a job, but all, also in terms of psychological support, but you know, I'm not the only one sitting here in my home doing this. Oh, there's other people doing it and I can help you and you can help me. It's very lonely, this whole job search process. Yeah, okay. clicking on the name does not um, does okay. not allow us to um, send direct message. All right, well, um, just, um, just send your request to us at this side tech and we'll try and hook you two up that way, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I think that's it, Lynn. We're, um, well, I wanna thank you all for, for coming today and really congratulate you for spending the time to try to get more resources and get more help. And as I said, it's um, a lonely process and it can be discouraging. And the more help you can get, the more people you can talk to, more ideas you can get, the better off you are. And it's just hard sitting at home alone, sending out these resumes and applying for jobs. And you know, the more support you can get from each other and from professionals is great. So I congratulate you all uh, for coming and for spending the hour. And if there's any other way I can help you or you want to um, find out what programs Jewish Vocational Service has, please go ahead and, again, use all these library resources. They're really amazing. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for a great program today, Lynn. And we'll see you um, at the next program. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.